such a tremendous looking trophy. Welcome to the number one PlayStation podcast in the Oceanias. My name's Dylan Blight and joining me, Ashley Hobley. Hey Dylan, how are you going today, this week? Um, Episode 101. Fantastic. 101. It's basically one. We rebooted it. It's fresh. There's a new, better looking cast. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. We've been recast? Just, yeah. We've. Uh, uh, what they call them? Bellstar Galactica? Uh, Cylons? So, no. Wait. We're Cylons? So, yeah, we're Cylons. Okay. If that's what they're called. Of all Where the uh, shape shifting duplicates, <laughs> clone like creatures you could, could have gone for. <laughs> You went for <laughs> the silence. Well, Balsar Galactica is a great te- TV show. It is. I um, just it, so, it's not the most. So popular. say we all. So say know? we all. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'd say it's underappreciated in some crowds. All right. you know? So silence. Any chance are. to get a any chance to get a reference out there? As you can tell, it's been a while since I watched it. Since I was forgetting what the fuck they're actually called. But <laughs> you know, it's still a great show. I was thinking about. I was probably just picturing Edward uh, James Osmos. Um, I was thinking about Blade Runner yesterday, so maybe that's my connection. I was thinking about Blade Runner yesterday, and then obviously he's in it. So then today, my brain's like still thinking about him, and then it goes for a reference, and then it thinks about clones and stuff, and then it thinks about him, and it thinks about Battlestar. Do you see how it all works now? Sure. A peek right, into the to mind. Number one, pl- <laughs> <laughs> one PlayStation Battlestar Galactica podcast. Uh, 100 episodes, and this is what you have to put up with. All right, let's jump, let's <laughs> jump into some news. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is the... I, I was surprised, honestly, with how much this was talked about and was a lot bigger of a deal than it was because when the news dropped, we just got done recording something or other and I mentioned it and he was like, eh, I had that for ages. Um, and it's because this past week, PlayStation dropped a app on iOS or well, for iOS devices, so iPads or iPhones, um, not Apple Watches, disappointingly, uh, where you can remote play your PlayStation. What are you shaking your head for? Where you can remote, remote play your PlayStation 4 now. And when we talked about this, it was why like would, the arcade couch. Why would you want to play it on your Apple Watch? Well, you, you know, some turn-based RPG. You? Turn-based RPG, it would go fine. But your Apple Watch is so tiny. And assuming is it you don't have your Bluetooth, your uh, DualShock 4 connected to it, hey, you want to have that little tiny virtual buttons? Fallout Shelter on my Apple Watch. Yeah, but it's 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 calibrated just to run off your PlayStation. It's not calibrated to, you know, to be touchscreen thingies. Siri, make babies. <laughs> it would have made it a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> platinum. Uh, yeah, so this, this dropped this past week, so now you can remote play on PS4. Um, yeah, when we talked about this, because we was recording Arcade Couch for last week, when it, the news dropped like after that or before that was talking about it, I was like, oh, I'll save that for Plat, obviously. But uh, he was like, oh, I've had this for ages. This is a new feature. And, but, but then we buried it out, the fact that you had an Xperia yeah, I had a, phone at some So stage. when I got my free PlayStation, it was with a Xperia phone. And one of the features mm-hmm. or whatever they were touting was you could remote play onto your Xperia. You could buy yeah, like a, a feature. You could buy like the controller thing where you can attach it, everything. A feature they were trying to make people buy that phone for. And I think yeah. now that they've added an app to iOS, it kind of proves how well the Xperia phone line went. Pretty much. It's, yeah. it's, it's a three horse race, let's be honest. Yeah, um, yeah, that's hundred percent true. Uh, did you? Uh, so, from your experience, not something you really cared about or ever would use, obviously. No, yeah, it. I well, it was like five years ago, probably now. So, mm-hmm. the technology wasn't that great. The remote play yeah. tech wasn't that flash. So, uh, and I always had access to a TV, so there was no really any point. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> and these days you have a, uh, well, what do you have? An Android. I have an Android. Of some sort. Yeah, a Samsung. Yeah. Yeah, so you're at, yeah, this race. But I tried it out, put up a video on how to actually use a controller with it, since that's the the thing most people were annoyed about. And I don't know, people seemed pretty stoked to be able to play with virtual controllers for some reason. Well, actually, you're right. I surprisingly saw a lot of people like, "Holy fuck, this is great!" And they were just using the on on screen touch screen stuff to play the games. I'm like, "Yo, yo, crazy." The idea that you could play this with at least your controller in the same house, I can understand that being a function particularly if you're uh, using an iPad or something where the screen's like, you know, big enough to 
be able to at least play something and and see what the fuck is happening like a decent sized ipad screen or something like that because then if someone in your if you've only got a one tv household or something it's a whole thing of like i want to watch my show and you can you know go play it on your ipad with your dualshock screen as uh, set up and whatever in the bedroom for a while or something like that so i can understand its use there uh playing the game solely with the on-screen keyboard the only games i can really think where that's Fine, turn or based, would even be okay. Is yeah, 100% visual novels. RPGs. Visual novels, that is another one. Uh, so even when I hooked up my DualShock, right, and I was pl- I played two round, two matches of Apex Legends on my phone, iPhone X is what I have. So picture that screen size, not a gr- not the biggest iPhone screen size, uh, not the smallest either, I don't think, but either way, it's not a giant fucking screen obviously um i was having trouble playing because i could barely see what the fuck was going on you know like it's it's clear just hold it up close like to the- your face <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, you nearly needed to i'm like i was really struggling you can get one of those lin- like, nintendo labo things oh no they don't attach to your face yeah, one of those mean. samsung vr things and uh nice and close yeah, yeah so <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize to anyone who had to put up with me playing those couple of matches of Apex with them while I was playing on my phone. I'm very sorry. Uh, but other than that, if you want to find out how you can hook up your, your DualShock, uh, there'll be a link in the show notes for this, for the <laughs> video on how to do that, if that's a thing you want to do. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't see myself doing it. No, hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll put a little presences on presences. Oh my God, we're struggling tonight. But we're recording this after I've done work. So anytime I fuck up words, uh, I'm going to blame them. I already been at work today um i'll say potentially if i ever did it it would be like an rpg or something where i'm like oh i'm watching something and i can grind at the same time if this if it ever comes up that i want to grind in an rpg in the future at some point yeah potentially could be a factor when i pull out and go this is a handy app but with all that said last year at some point i hooked up and i did the remote play app on my laptop uh, where you can hook up the controller through that and you can play on the your your desktop PC or your, your laptop. And I did that last year when I was playing through the, the Minecraft games because there's, you know, a little bit of lag every now, and, every now and then the connection will drop for a second, of course. And if you're playing a Twitch-based shoot, shoot that, that's going to be a problem. It's the same for the, the desktop app uh, as well as the phone app, I've noticed. So it's not really the best thing to play for Twitchy-based games. But playing Minecraft, I took my laptop and I went outside and I, I played it all out in the sun pretty much last year because I was like, I want to play this, but at the same time, I don't really need to be stuck in my bedroom and it was a nice day. So I just took my laptop outside and took my DualShock and I, I played it out there. So, you know, there are times where these things are... Yeah, handy, I guess. I <laughs> um, all right, moving on. The Division 2 is out today, kind of maybe, if you're listening to this. Technically, it's, it's the collector's edition. Look... It's got a two-part release system, but it's no anthem, is how I'll describe it. It's a lot easier to understand. It's either, There's not 50 different options? Yeah, there's not 50 different options. There are simply two, which, as, as much as I'm still like, mm, I much prefer it where games just come out all on the same day. If, if this is the thing that companies are going to continue to do and give people who pre-order collector's editions early access... I'm fine when it's easy to understand like the Division's done it, which is, hey, if you pre-order the Collector's Edition, you can play the game on Tuesday. If you're waiting to get the Standard Edition, you play it on Friday. Pretty simple to understand, I think. Yep. You know, there's not different release dates for consoles and and then Collector's Edition's built on top of that as well. So either way, uh, Division 2 is out today if you've got the Collector's Edition thing. Uh, if you're waiting till Friday for it to drop, be very prepared because... It has a day one patch and they could add another patch before Friday for who fucking knows. It has a day one patch between 88 to 92 gigabytes. And I swear this is the biggest fucking day one patch I can remember in quite some time. So you what you're telling me is you get the collector's edition, you can actually play it on Friday. That's true. Yeah. And side note for all this, as of recording, Monday night, obviously, before a show comes out on Tuesday morning, I'm not sure if I pre-ordered the collector's edition or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 100% sure because well, not I didn't. At one stage, I was umming and ahhing about getting the steelbook one, which was it wasn't the full-on collector's edition, but I'm pretty sure still is it's out tomorrow. Like it's not edition. the one with the statue. Yeah, it's it's not the one with the statue or anything crazy like that. It's just like steelbook, 
and maybe the season pass or you know something along those lines. So maybe I'm picking up the division tomorrow in time to play it on Friday as well. Is what I'm thinking. <laughs> I might have a couple of days of downloads to go through and give yeah. me the heads up. And then everyone who gets it on Friday, I'll I'll join. You can play with me next Tuesday. By the time you've all downloaded it, especially those with Brisbane internet, yeah, which is the worst internet. Well, the interesting thing I- is the 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 patch isn't apparently as big on other platforms, which yeah, it's weird. It's like half the size elsewhere. Yeah, that's why it's like I I don't understand. It's I don't know. I was thinking about it, right? So mm-hmm. it's ninety two gigabyte up to. 92 gigabyte thing on PS4. But then it says here somewhere, and I'm looking at this story from tweaktown.com, by the way. And it says that, you know, once it boils it down, the, the file size, it'll only take up to uh, a, a roughly the same size. It's, it's roughly to 80 or 90 gigabytes either way. So by the time you install it, and this is what a lot of patches do, obviously, you'll say like a 50 gigabyte patch. But then when you download it, the file the file size of the game data on your PlayStation is only up by like a couple of gigabytes because it downloads the patch, but then deletes all the files it doesn't need anymore and et cetera. So then I wonder if the PlayStation compared to Xbox does this sort of thing differently where it needs to download a much bigger file, even if it's going to delete a heap of files afterwards anyway. I don't know. It's really weird. Either way, I wish those, uh, those wanting to play tomorrow the best of luck. I mean, this is one of those times where it really is you're better off pre-ordering digitally nearly because you could at midnight tonight or you could have started preloading a couple of days ago. Whenever actually, it starts when preloading. Pre-lo- yeah, preloading happened uh, two, three days ago at this stage, I think. So you would have been set potentially for today. But even then, it's like, fuck, you need like a midnight release just not yeah. to, to get the ga- not to get the game in the collector's edition. You just want a midnight release solely so you can fucking stick it in your console overnight and get that. <laughs> Is <laughs> get this downloaded. just a secret? Uh, trick that they're doing so people buy it digitally so they can preload the giant pat day one patch no that would be conspiracy imagine if that was true that would be some like hardcore suing happening if that was a real thing that was happening why no it's like uh tricking people to force them to buy digitally i don't know there's surely laws or something would take up there probably (laughs) i don't know i mean it's it would be smart the division is fucking huge and as it points out here it says the article does say the division two will take up almost twenty percent of a standard five hundred gigabyte PS4's hard drive. So hundred gigabytes. Nothing else on it. Nothing else on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's one of those things when people point it out. And I'm like, oh yeah. Like I have one terabyte, but I forget that obviously a lot of people would have smaller ones. Yeah, well, smaller the, ones. Yeah, the original in one they got with the PlayStation. Yeah, so fuck that shit. That you, you'd literally <laughs> have to buy. <laughs> you'd literally need to upgrade just to play the division. Uh, but I will say I'm excited for the division. I'm looking forward to playing the division. Uh, if I get to play it tomorrow, maybe. Uh, if I get to play it Friday, maybe. If I get to play it by next month, maybe. We'll we'll see. Depending on what edition I've actually pre-ordered, yet to be decided, <laughs> uh, and how fast my internet wants to play when I stick the disc finally in, which is also yet to be determined. So either way, looking forward to playing the division. Out tomorrow, out Friday, whenever the fuck you get it. Uh, stay tuned for more opinions on that. Uh, probably on uh, Okay Couch if the patch downloads and I play it before we record that before the end of the week. Okay Couch at every Saturday, 6 a.m. Australian time. Thank you very much. Next story Borderlands VR has finally added aim controller support months after its launch date. This is fantastic news. Very, very excited about this. It increases the chances of me actually playing it. Yep. <laughs> So close to being what everybody wants. There's just one thing they need to add. Two aim controllers. That and multiplayer. Oh, yeah, multiplayer. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any dual-wielding guns in, in Borderlands? Uh, Borderlands? Yeah. Yeah, surely. And how are you supposed to... From memory? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. Unless you're just controlling you... one gun and then the other gun's like... It, it just locks out the other guns. aiming at the same point. Could be true. Could be a thing. Because, yeah. like, uh, in that game, uh, Evasion, for example, Evasion VR, which I wrote a review for and I wasn't the biggest fan of, but it was fine. Uh, it, it's, like, made to be played with the aim controller, but there are, in the, there are things that worked a lot better with the move controllers because, obviously, the gun shooting and everything was a lot easier and better holding the move controller, and that's just how it's going to work. Because the, 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 um, Sorry, the aim controller, because it's a... It's a 
very good controller, actually, I think. Very, very well designed and works very well on most of these VR games. But then, if you use the move controllers, you are able to move your gun separately to your shield. Whereas if you're choosing the move controller, your shield was always attached to the top of your gun and there was no way for you to move it around in a completely different direction. So it was kind of like, hey, you get to use better, better gun combat, but you're fucked out of being able to rotate your shield behind you if enemies appear from there or, or anything like that. So maybe... Borderlands does the same thing. I'm not really sure. They did, they didn't put up much video, so they, the announcement just randomly came from Gearbox's official Twitter, and they put up a new a new Borderlands 2 VR up, update is out today, including performance optimizations, bug fixes. Also, we now have aim controller support. Read more about the patch here. Blah 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 blah. And they attached a little video of the aim controller. It's only 15 seconds. It's, it shows one gun, obviously, or else would have their answer for this fucking question. Yep. But it just shows one gun being moved around. They open up the menu, and it switches to a uh, aim controller on screen and you can see that moving around which is how most games that use the aim controller work whenever you open up menus or something just to remind you that that's your like pointer your mouse is the the fucking gun you have in your hand but I'm keen I still don't have it it's one of those things at this stage where it's like wait for it I just to be need on to sale. see it yeah I need to see it on sale or something at, at this stage but I'm I'm very keen to try it out I mean I was keen before Borderlands in VR that's an interesting uh, sentence. Borderlands in I keep saying Borderlands by the way. It is Borderlands 2, should clarify. Borderlands 2 in VR with the aim controller. Yes, please, because I very much enjoy using that controller in games. It, it would be one, one of the one. only m- one. games that you could sort of move around fully. First person shooter ish, uh, right? No, firewall. Uh open world ish. Okay. Oh, an open world game with the yeah, yeah, it would be then, yeah. 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 Although you're kind of anyway you're kind of correct because most games that do use the controller are very uh they m- most use like the 90 degree like rotation yeah things, i guess is how they design the majority of them and even then most of the ones where you can turn their feet feature off that i've tried are bad they make they like they're not designed well and they, that's where they give you that little bit of a, a sick feeling whereas the ones that do it well like firewell which of course we all know i love it doesn't make you feel sick or anything because it's just the locomotions designed really well so that's obviously another thing with borderlands 2 vr it's like okay free free locomotion controls is one thing but then when you're holding the gun and you're very much just it's it's all there you know it's even a little bit more immersive i feel because you kind of forget yourself a little bit when you're just holding the controller and moving because that's what i find in firewall sometimes too even though you're pushing up on um the analog stick on the controller because most of what you're doing is just moving the actual gun around in real life and it's one-to-one you kind of just get in there your mind just starts moving your character around with the analog stick and you kind of forget you're doing it if you know what i mean yeah because you're more concentrated on actually moving the the weapon around more so than the analog stick uh but yeah i'm, I'm keen to try it out i'm glad they added support i it's weird that they just didn't have it in day one really and they took this long to bother patching in i guess it's it probably might have sold better day one because i remember when it came out i looked on the psvr uh, reddit thread because sometimes when vr games come out I'm, I'm keen i go there to have a look to see what the general consensus of excitement is for for, for a certain game and most people on that reddit thread the day it launched or the day before when i was looking was like eh, if it had aim support i might give it a go but nah so because yeah. You got to forget a lot. Well, you got to remember a lot of times for the, the VR stuff. It's like it doesn't really matter what the game is. The, these people on the the Reddit thread, for example, the Reddit forum for VR owners aren't like Borderlands. Fuck yeah, I want to play it no matter what because it's Borderlands. They're like, I've got this cool controller. I want fucking games to use it with. So it yeah. doesn't. If you put aim support in a the game, they're going to be like, yes, I will buy your game. Yeah. Fucking SpongeBob SquarePants game, but aim control those fuckers. People on Reddit would probably <laughs> probably buy it at this stage. <laughs> I, I I want to know how many games there is. I'm not home. Wouldn't know off the top of my head, but it's probably around. There's really not that many games. Probably that support like the 10, controller, I suppose. Maybe. Yeah, probably very like 10. small list. So, hopefully, more aim controller games coming forward. Hmm. And, um, what's the fuck doesn't use it? I don't think, as far as I'm aware. Um, the one you played at PAX. Uh, what the fuck's that called? Uh, Bullet. London. Oh, London Heist. Yeah. No, that's the original. Blood one. and God. No, Tru- Blood and Truth. Blood and Truth. That's it. Yeah, that doesn't use it, no, as far as I'm aware. move controllers. Yeah, it's move controllers because yeah. you've got to be able to like pick up stuff and whatever. Yeah, you've got to pick up so. stuff so, and reload yeah. your gun and whatever, so that makes sense. 
Rip. Oh, well, hopefully some more stuff. Uh, all right, moving on. Sekiro's Shadows Die Twice shows uh, has shown up some new gameplay this past week in a live stream that FromSoft did, a uh, Japanese live stream, I should clarify, because I watched uh, the gameplay segments that someone like cut out on YouTube. They Not like the full thing where they're talking in between with no- nothing happening, where obviously I wouldn't be able to get anything from it because I <laughs> couldn't understand what the what? fuck What? You saying. don't speak Japanese? Yeah, I know. It's, it's disappointing. Or, uh, if there's any language I would learn, right, it would be Japanese because obviously it would help if you went there, it would enable me also to a lot of these times where these streams happen. Imagine like back in the day when I was watching that, I was watching that live stream for fucking um, the quiet man. I would have known yeah. what I was in for. Instead, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, uh-huh. this looks cool. Uh-huh. I definitely <laughs> yeah. want to play this. <laughs> Maybe if I knew what they were saying, I would have known. I would have, I would have had more clue what was good, I was in for. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I, I watched all the gameplay they showed off in this thing. And uh, there was an article put up on once again, twin infinite, they put it all together and uh, gathered together the gameplay elements of it. For the most part, it was, stu- it was stuff that we've seen before and it just seemed to be more of a, uh, hey, the game's out in like a week, two weeks, I suppose, when the, when this this thing was on, basically. And it was just more of an uh, excitement live stream, I suppose. So they had, um, I'm going to fuck up people's names here, for example, but it says the live stream was presented by marketing manager Yasir, Yish- Yish- oh my God, Kiato, who you may... Re- remember from when he covered the same role on Bloodborne for Sony Interactive Entertainment before moving on to From Software. And then interestingly, it says, Sony Interactive Entertainment Japan studio producer Masaki Yamagwa, oh my God, was also present. You also may find him familiar due to his work on Bloodborne. Uh, and then it continues and says, during the show, kiato san showcased several screenshots and illustrations, including the reveal of the map of the game, which I looked at because it's 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 at the bottom of the article, but I really could not gather much from it because it's not a, it's not like a it's like a hand drawn ish type map thing, and it's like you can see a lot of buildings and and pathways and and stuff, and it's like, oh, okay, so this is the 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 town or whatever we're referring to it as that's in the uh, amongst a bunch of mountains and stuff but it, it personally didn't give me much idea of like how that translates to what it's going to be in the game or anything like that so that wasn't too interesting to me uh, but it says the article does say which is pretty much structured like the worlds of a souls game which i presume they're saying it's structured where everything like kind of connects and you'll 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 leave one area and it'll loop back around to an area you've been before and you'll be able to unlock shortcuts to to get to areas faster because that's pretty much how Souls games are structured, like a very well-designed maze is how they're all des- designed. Uh, you can see them in the gallery at the bottom. On top of that, we also saw some gameplay played on a PS4 by lead game designer Masura y- Yamahura starting a battle with showcasing off the basic of the combat, which we've kind of been over before. But the second part was more interesting because the second batch of gameplay shows a new area, stealth, and plenty of brutal combat. Interestingly, we also see an interaction with a friendly character show assists the player in battle. So that was the part I found most interesting out of all these videos. The, the next section after that, they just fight the boss that they've shown off before, which at this stage, we're pretty much assuming is just the first boss in the game. Unless they've do some last minute trickery and fuck around the order of the bosses or something. But we've seen the boss before. Not that interesting. But the new level they showed off, everything's on fucking fire, which was, I presume, would take, like, would be a story beat potentially. Like, something happens, everything nope, starts catching on fire. that's just the world. Like, eh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, who knows. Uh, they then, like, they do show some pretty cool things that make this game stand out a lot more from your soul's typical stuff because, like, everything is on fire. They jump up on top of uh, a building and then they do some like kind of Spider-Man-esque shit where they jumped off the top, started falling to their death and then quickly like grappled back up onto a pole and did that a- a bu- along a bunch of things. And it kind of looked like, grab you know, webbing up on top of a pole, but it's a grapple hook thing, which we've seen before, obviously. But it was cool to see that much. Um, and it's not really like a hardcore platforming, but it's a level of platforming we don't usually see in a, a Souls game, really, because they're mostly just walking and opening doors and rolling i guess you're not, you're not grappling around like you are in this one yeah uh then they make it down to a, another area and they yeah this, this section does show off the stealth a lot they're they're in grass they're hiding sneaky up behind enemies uh hiding behind pillars uh, doors and stuff which they showed off when they revealed the game but uh there was that one section in the in the reveal where they did a bunch of combat and then they go up into a building and they hide behind a wall in this this 
building and then they stealthily take someone else down. But after that fact, most of the gameplay they've released and shown off has always been about that actual like combat. So this section was interesting because it does show you how you could play through an entire section if you wanted to in stealth. Of course, you could have just ran through here like normal and, and start taking down enemies left, right and center and just blown your, the alarm bells, I guess. But that's up to you. It's nice to have the option, but that's something also I noticed when I even playing it at PAX because I was able to be like, fuck this shit. These enemies are kicking my ass, run away and then like loop back around and then come back in and take them out stealthy. So I like, I'm enjoying the options that this game's showing. It, it definitely, the more I see of it, it's like, it's definitely souls like, and you can see that, but at the same time, it just doesn't look anything like a souls game at the same time. And it's really weird. It's like that, that, that direct mix down the middle of, I can tell it's made by the same people, but it definitely feels like, something that's really, really new and fresh. And you could argue like Bloodborne was that back in the day, I guess. But at the same time, Bloodborne, you still look at it and you can tell it's a Souls game. The, the general gameplay design, even though the combat's different and Bloodborne's design, uh, combat design is based around being more aggressive than defensively compared to the Souls game. This one is just the ability to jump and up and stuff. Like they, they watching the boss battle again, it just surprises me how agile you can be in this game and reactionary so the, the huge boss sweeps down the sword you can jump up into the air to dodge that and then do an air attack back down on top of their face and these sorts of things whereas bloodborne uh was more just being up in their face constantly and you, you obviously went up jumping up and down and doing aerobatics in the air and dark souls games were always holding your shield up rolling attacking holding your shield up rolling attacking so yeah really really looking forward to getting more about Sekiro. It's very, very soon. Very, very soon. We're, we're approaching a, a point where a lot of games are coming out. I'm excited. Especially because I wasn't excited about Resident Evil, I suppose. Because I, I haven't had a... You, know, you haven't my, had my a year game hasn't yet. Really, yeah, my year, well, my year yeah, hasn't Kingdom really Hearts. kicked off. That's true, but I feel like that was one game and it was kind of like a lull a bit. And, you know, like I tried out Anthem, but I wasn't like super excited about Anthem. But I've been pretty... Pretty pretty pumped for Division for the last couple of weeks now. The more after playing the beta and stuff, so I was like, yes, I'm keen for the Division. And then it's like Division, Sekiro, um, whatever the fuck else is coming out. Stuff that isn't PlayStation related <laughs> towards the end of March as well. Yeah, that's Um, but that's a that's some other things. Uh, oh yeah, and then the last thing I'll point out about Sekiro again is the part where they had an NPC playing with them is really interesting too, because obviously Souls games are usually designed as these. Solo. Solar singular experiences unless you're playing online and someone like invade you or something like that. So to see a character like interact with someone and then that character talk back to you and be like, I'm going to help you in this battle. And they kind of charge into battle against a bunch of other characters. I was like, this is interesting. And I wonder if this is a one-off thing or like happens several times. Uh, I would expect it to be sparse that you team up with other characters because that would be really against the from software design, I guess. But either way, it's still quite interesting to see happen. Um, all right, talking about J Japanese games, another one that I'm weirdly excited about, and it's really odd, actually, is Judgment, which finally got its European release date this week, uh, which was attached onto a PS blog post where they go heavily into explaining the... the, the <laughs> I, I had to read the article twice, because at first I didn't understand what the fuck they were even saying or what the hell they were trying to tell me about. So I read it twice. I was like, okay, now I understand. So the game is being dubbed in English, okay. which is a big deal for this game because obviously the um, Judgment is a Yakuza, what do you call it? A spinoff? It's like, it's in the same world. It's I a spinoff, like yeah. A, I guess, yeah. So it's a Yakuza spinoff and the y Yakuza games haven't been dubbed since like Yakuza 1 or something along those lines. So quite a long time because they pretty much put out Yakuza 1, dubbed it. It was horrible English dub. Uh, you know, picture your, picture your bad Japanese uh, to English dub. And that's how the first game went. And they haven't bothered doing it since then. But for Judgment, they're doing an English dub uh, where they're changing the dialogue. And I have an example in the blog post. So they actually, I appreciate the amount of effort they're going into this because it, it obviously costs money to do this, to change lines, record lines, all these sorts of things. But they have up like a picture here where it says the Japanese version, for example, is the character saying... Uh, suing me is a bad idea. And in English, they've changed it to, you know, won't know what hit you. So they explain that they're not just having the English person 
uh, voice reading and characters say the exact one for one versions of the lines that the from the Japanese script, because although they said it most of the time would work, bar a couple like very Japanese references or wh- whatever, like lingo yeah. and stuff like that, uh, they said most of the time it would probably work. But to make the English ex- experience a better one, they said they are changing certain lines and things to lingo and words and stuff that make more sense for. Uh, an or English speaking audience. So I found that really interesting. So th- this has led them to having to send people off to subtitle the game twice because you're going to have English subtitles for the normal Japanese track and then you're going to have English subtitles for the English track, if that makes sense. Yeah. This is why I had to read it twice because I was very confused. I'm like, what do you mean there's two English subtitles? It doesn't make <laughs> sense. But then I was like, oh, wait, no, I, I, I understand it. And that's interesting. My thing is... I, w- I watch the gameplay and stuff, and I'm like, I guess it's fine. Like, I, the, the voice acting doesn't stand out terribly to me. But I definitely kind of fall into the camp where nine times out of ten, if it's a Japanese game or like anime, for example, I will, you know, if there's an option, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just watch it with subtitles. You know, I don't, I don't really go for the English dubs. Like, where do you, where do you fall in the that camp? Uh, it just depends. Yeah. On which, on how good quality you hear the dub is or not, and whether I want to pay full attention or not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you have to be reading all the fucking time if it's yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's, that's just one depends. reason I don't watch anime anymore. Yeah, it's a you have to story. commit to it. You can't put you it on the commit. <laughs> no, you can't be doing something else. It's really hard to keep track of that shit. Exactly. Uh, where would you fall on this then? What, what camp would you put this um, in? I would wait to see what people say. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably a fair call. I saw most people in the comments in the article here on the, the PS blog were like, uh, I'm glad to see it. pretty much exactly how I fe- felt, which is most people are saying, this is really cool that you're going to this much effort, appreciate it, blah, 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 blah. But I'll probably just use the Japanese audio with English subs, you know, especially for people who are Yakuza fans, which the majority of them, I presume yeah. they are. And that's how it's they've been just, experiencing it, the, the franchise. Yeah, it's more for new people who are new to the franchise, I assume. Yeah. Yes, that's what the person, uh, one Scott Sturt, Skirt Chart, which is the localization producer on, on the project, says in here that that's pretty much the reason they're doing it. And the reason... because. It was like, you know, we don't do it for Yakuza. Why are we doing it for this game all of a sudden? And the answer was because although this is Yakuza spinoff, we know potentially this could draw in new fans. It's its own IP kind of thing. So yeah. we want people to be able to get interested in it. Whereas people walk, walk into EB Games or JB Hi-Fi or wherever, they see fucking Yakuza. Everyone's like, I know what that shit is. Like, that's some hardcore yeah. Japanese shit. <laughs> although it looks pretty much the same. It Except does. There looks but, to be some detective work. Yeah, I'm keen. I'm really keen to. Yeah, it like, how pretty do you good. feel about it? Because I don't think we really talked about it apart from that one time it was announced uh, at the uh, kind of funny showcase thing. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, it it looks wacky like Yakuza. I mean, they're doing all kinds of weird mini games and stuff, and they're, uh, they've stolen a thing from Phoenix Wright. I don't know if you saw that in the trailer, but <laughs> yeah, we should totally yeah, does yeah, we'll the explain in case you haven't. In case you're not up to that, so. Yeah, Judgment, Yakuza spin-off, but compared to Yakuza, obviously, if you don't know for some reason what Yakuza is, I guess, Yakuza is a, like, un- underworld It's a Japanese game. gang. A- That's what the yeah, Yakuza Japanese, is. Yeah, so you play as bad guys, in quotation marks, in those games, I guess, technically. Uh, Judgment, you're going to be playing as a cop, which is it's obviously a lawyer. completely... Is it? I thought it was cop. Nope. Well, they both the same? <laughs> I mean, I- I've played Ace Attorney. He does it all. <laughs> That's true. Well... Yeah, pretty much, it looks like. Yeah. What's the difference? I'll play Professor Layton. I mean... He does it all too. <laughs> legally? He's not supposed to be beating up people? <laughs> okay, well, he does. I've seen... I saw yeah. it in the gameplay trailer. Yeah. Uh, okay, so he's a he's a uh, lawyer, right? And uh, he's running around, and there's a, obviously a murder and case and stuff like that. And in the game, yeah, in the, in the gameplay trailer, it shows a couple different gameplay types. The first one is whatever which is it like shows you you're chasing people and it's basically a quick time event as you're chasing people and try to hide from them and whatever else i'm like whatever i mean really if you're playing this game you're kind of playing it for the story and the ridiculous story and the ridiculous characters and whatever else the gameplay is like 
serviceable. I, f- I feel it, that's what it looks like to me. And then it shows another section where you're investigating stuff in like first person. It looked like a fucking visual novel to me, basically. We like yeah. clicking around on objects and, and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, that's that's intriguing, different. And then it showed another section where you was pretty much going fucking Super Saiyan Dragon Ball Z and like kicking people about 20, 50 feet up into the air in combat. And I was like, this game's got it all. Everything. <laughs> what, what do you need? <laughs> uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm legit interested. And I thought this was a really interesting thing for them to be doing because, you know, it's one of those things you read and you, it's like, okay, so two sets of subtitles, changing lines before actually recording VO and all these sorts of things. It's like, that's all money and time and, you know, like a lot a lot of things that most people usually wouldn't do. And in fact, the first quotation here at the start for this article is, quote, I want one English subtitle track that mirrors what the English actors are saying, but I want a second English subtitle track that would accompany the Japanese audio. Can we do that? I asked a room full of Japanese developers via telecom. A moment of silence passed that felt like an eternity. There was clearly some confusion. We can probably do that, but why? <laughs> um, so I'm, sur- I'm, I give props for them actually allowing him as the localization producer to be like, yeah, okay, do that. Like it's going to cost more money and time and probably not worth it, but <laughs> go for gold, dude. Do, do what you need to do, Scotty. Scotty doesn't know that Judgment Game is probably just going to be brought by Yakuza fans. Let's move on to the next story. Days Gone is a game that's out in about what's it? What are we at now? Six weeks ish, I guess. Yeah, like, half. Uh, yeah, end of April, twenty yeah. sixth of April. Yeah, so, so yeah, we're, we're about getting six there. Weeks. Either way, we're getting there. Let's let's just say it's it's, it's about as far as away as uh, end 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 game is. Yeah, exactly the same yeah. day. Very similar properties as well you know because in days gone as i found out listening to a multiple multitude of fucking podcasts this past week by a bunch of press people and what's what's not that got to try the game last week uh i found out by listening to andrew and a pointed this out on what's good games that in the pause menu it says insert amount of days gone in the pause menu so it'll say like 386 days gone Get it? Because the title. So 300 something days gone since, I presume, the The, event that causes the the end of the... Yeah, the the snap. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. That's how I'm connecting them all in. So Endgame is days gone since the snap. This is an alternate world where instead of snapping and getting rid of half the people, he snapped and he turned half the people into freakers. Yeah, Exactly. It's some hardcore DC side fan fiction, alternate universe stuff. Uh, so <laughs> Days Gone put is, is having a lot of stuff came out this this week, though, uh, leading up. People played it. People got very hefty hands on time. Like five plus hours, I heard, was the, the time that a lot of these press people got. So fairly big chunk of the game. And from most what I could read up and listen to and watch video watch videos about most people who I know for a fact and had heard them previously say that they weren't too chuffed about the game much like myself i guess first impressions they went to happy about it like you know months ago when they last played it said it had a huge improvement when they played it recently so that's good to hear you know yeah that's very (laughs) promising that's that's a nice thing i i I enjoyed hearing uh so that's that's good and the map has come out via uh games reactor which i presume they weren't supposed to leak this but i mean it's a thing that's out and the map it's fairly big as well i'll say like it looks a lot bigger than what i actually thought that the game was going to be to be honest like obviously i understood it was an open world game and all these sorts of things but i still was like it's probably not going to be that big you know more enclosed spaces and whatever else but then i suppose i was thinking about it all wrong because of course it is a fucking motorbike game where it's designed yeah. around that motorbike pretty much so traversal is like a huge thing so yeah lots of you can't have like a tiny like six by six box no, that's, yes, you're you're right. I think I think I was thinking about it all wrong, and I was probably just. Not it looks like it's a the, Horizon Zero Dawn sort of size. It does, which is quite big. Quite big. It looks bigger even if I was to compare it side by side. This could look a little bit bigger than that even. I don't know. It depends how we zoom in, but um, 
Yeah, for those obviously listening, which is you, <laughs> you can't <laughs> see the visual map that we're looking at. Uh, it, it doesn't really tell you too much. Like the, the only there's only certain areas that are coloured in, of course, where the play's actually been. The rest of it is still greyed out until you uh, make your way to that area, I presume, and stuff. There's a couple icons on the screen. There's nothing too crazy, which is, of course, good because it means there's not going to be like Ubisoft level uh, fucking million and one sidetracks, miscellaneous tasks and whatever the fuck else to, to find on the map. Well, at least judging off the picture we have here. And they could have turned off for those features. Of course, that could be a thing. But I'm fucking hoping there's not like... Please don't have like 500 fucking random collectibles you need to <laughs> drive around. Because it wouldn't make sense in a game that's like a survival... Basically, it's like, oh, I got to get all these collectibles and every 10 minutes you're stopping to refuel up your fucking bike and stuff while you're driving around getting them. That sounds horrible. That doesn't sound like a good time at all. Uh, but yeah, you can see the the area that they're mostly shown is like uh, gray, like green and stuff. So that's like the bushlandies type stuff. But then you would presume the area is like more either up towards the north right, the uh, northeastish section potentially is like the... Uh, we've seen like the underground caverns and all that sort of stuff that we've seen before, like the volcano-ish area we saw in the trailer and stuff and then i presume what would make sense is down south from that there's like snowy type section or something like that so although the map doesn't really tell you too much i you can kind of read into it a bit and try and guesstimate where areas are going to be i guess to help you along those things uh and talking about days gone which we just said was out very soon and we know it's actually going to come out very soon. No, Ashley Hobby jumping in here saying, yeah, but is it? Because it has actually gone gold, gold, gold this week. So it is and will be finally releasing after it. How many delays did it go through? Th- two? Three. One. Was it one? I thought it was more. Well, they never got a release date till, mm, till it was know. dropped on that February date. And then it got moved. Yeah. Right, so I it was just like- one. Yeah, that, that's probably you're probably right. It's probably just one. Probably. probably. I thought it was. I thought it was two, and I'm probably counting the imaginary one I had in my head for the <laughs> its initial <laughs> release date. And they mm. moved it from that surprisingly. Who'd have thought? But yeah, they post up a thing on Twitter that said, "Our team has done a hashtag days gone has gone gold. It's been quite the ride, and we can't wait for you to experience the game on April 26. Good for them. Very happy. Got it out the door. Means they'll be working on. Uh, fixing up any last things for patches and these sorts of things. Uh, or, maybe they'll be working on some uh, DLC, maybe. Maybe they could be working on some DLC because this past week also, in an interview that happened where I presume someone let the... I think this person might have let the the word slip because no, this story came from like a random YouTube video. Like it's legit. Like it was a legit interview and everything. But this same person... Or like this news wasn't duplicated, you, you know, like they weren't talking about this sort of stuff in the, with IGN or in, in, in these sorts of places. I think they this person just fucked up a little bit. So uh, the news story, though, comes from uh, Push Square, where it says, while it hasn't been applied to every first party game, we've rather enjoyed Sony's DLC strategy this generation. Uh, games like Horizon Zero Dawn and Marvel Spider-Man have been expanded with enormous add-on packs and it sounds like there'll be more content coming to Days Gone after its release on April 26. While developer Ben Studio isn't dealing with exactly, isn't detailing what it's got in the pipeline just yet, community manager David Lee told Game Braves that there is an unannounced add-on content on the way, but quote, we cannot, cannot tell you more about that yet. Who'd have fucking thought? One thing is clear. The campaign will be complete on launch day, so expect the DLC to be additive rather than plugging gaps. What would you expect Days Gone, Days Gone DLC to be now that we're being teased at its potential? Um, more hats. More different Horse, hats. Uh, motorbike armor. <laughs> yeah, you get to <laughs> switch up what type of motorbikes they are. You know? <laughs> You laugh now. <laughs> no, yeah, the internet's going to complain about it for months, and then they'll finally drop it. You know, I would. I would do you recall if Sony when Sony announced the DLC plans for Spider Man? I from memory uh, before release. Yeah, but it wasn't like talking about heaps before release. It was only like, you know. I f- I feel like it was a month before release, if that, if not potentially like three weeks or something like that. You know, like, it wasn't months and months before release, was it? It wasn't something we knew about so. ages into it because then it would have pissed people off. Because the, if you announce DLC too early, then there's the whole thing of like, why isn't it in the game? Blah, 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 blah. Because I feel like Spider Man's DLC went 
well, like overall. The, yeah, I the, think people, well, it was good. And then I think it was probably pretty well received. Yeah, because it was, I, I mean, overall, it was a fine DLC content. It wasn't obviously better than the main game, which is something that would be really weird if you did it happen was. to do for DLC, I guess. Uh, did you say it was? No, it, like it would be weird if it was better than the real. Oh game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my god, um, and yeah. So it was decent content, and I th- also think the thing that worked is they announced it that little bit before the game dropped, so we knew it was coming. So that kept people who beat the game in a day or two, or you know, whatever, well, like people, I did, like a mad yeah, person. People would have known beforehand because it was included in like the clickers edition and stuff in the thing. Yeah, yeah. So then you get to keep it around, and those people weren't trading it in, and then because it had a decent release schedule of. Uh, once a month or whatever it was, it was this nice, yeah, don't go with the game, DLC is coming, DLC is coming. So I'm feeling like that wouldn't be a bad thing to do with Days Gone if they, like, obviously more side, like some sort of side story that isn't that big or something and they could spread it out over a couple of months. I feel like that is a good yeah. release strategy for these types of mm-hmm. story-based games and content and stuff. You know, you do what uh, Horizon did do and just open up another part of the map. Oh, well, yeah. I. By the way, I still haven't played that, so that's a... Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag number one PlayStation podcast. Only oh, the only oh, Sorry, everyone. Uh, I'm like, uh, look, the more of, of, of li- the more I've listened to, re- read about, and watched about Days Gone this past week, I wouldn't say it's obviously got me super excited, but at least has put a little bit of a cooling on my feelings from playing it at PAX, which I didn't hate, but at the same time, it made me go, hmm, don't know about this, you know, don't know about this chief as the meme is. Yeah. Yeah. Naruto, whatever the fuck it is. Is that what the gif is? I have no idea what you're talking about. You know the gif where it's a hand and it's like, don't know about that chief? No. Someone tell me in the comments down below. <laughs> Tweet at if you're, dri- if, you're, if you're driving, <laughs> just fucking. Pull over. Pull over. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if it's from Naruto. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, it, it's cooled me off a little bit. At least I, I'm feeling a little bit safer about it. Could so be hopefully, the hopefully sleeper hit of the year. It could be, and I'd be very happy with that because everything I hear I hear about it, I'm like, this sounds interesting. This sounds like stuff I want to do. It's like it's like a nice mix between survival elements, third-person action game, zombie game, horror game. You know, it's like fucking shocking a million genres at the wall. Yeah. And just going, well, here you go. Here's a game. <laughs> you know, like a, a hard... Uh, considering they were saying like 20% of the game is going to be cutscenes and stuff. So they're trying to tell a pretty substantial story, you know. Yeah. They set up the whole wedding trailer and all that sort of stuff. Like they're trying to tell a real mm-hmm. story with this game. It isn't just open world, like opening cutscene, do what you want for... Fa- it's not Far Cry. Is what I'm <laughs> <saying>. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the last story. PlayStation China held a conference in the past week and announced seven new games in it. They have been announced to be releasing globally as well, in case you were like me and was like, when you read the new story, was going, yeah, but they're probably not going to come outside. Yep, they are. They're coming outside to globally, so that's good. So that does open up business about being intrigued about the, these following games. So let's go over them, tell you about them. So this, this new story comes from pressstart.com.au. PlayStation China today held a press conference in Beijing to announce seven new games that are a part of a new Sony initiative called the China Hero Project, in which they'll fund and publish seven Chinese-developed games for PS4, both in China and globally. From this, we got seven new PS4 game announcements, and they all look pretty damn good. The Huge X over at Reset Era has provided a description of each game, which you can also find below. These games all look pretty damn interesting, and it's great to see Sony funding some smaller titles. Well, I mean, really what this is, is Sony funding seven indie games to come to, like, publish worldwide. Is what yeah, it is. pretty much. So, that's pretty good. Uh, did you watch, have you watched all of them? I've watched bits and pieces. Okay, so good enough to have some sort of opinion on them. Sorry, so let, let's go for it. So the first one is called Eviction. Oh, sorry. Evo- <laughs> Evo- 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 oh, my God. Avonction? Go. Avonction? Sounds about right to me. It's, yeah, Ev- Avonction? Yeah, sure. Let's let's go for that. Uh, it's described as a person hack and stealth game. The trailer does not show you actual gameplay. It's more of a... Mood piece. Mood. Like, it, 
it gives you an idea of what you'll be doing. So it has a character. Also interesting for this is it's all English voice acted uh, and this, it's subtitled in Chinese. It's not v- vice versa. So I found that interesting considering this is probably the, I presume this is the same trailer they show that the fucking thing, like they didn't upload one, suddenly had English voice acting. So don't know what, don't know what's going on there. Uh, but yeah, so there's a character running down some spaceship thing, uh, sneaking around trying to get away f- from some characters or beings or monsters or who the fuck went knows. We don't really know. Uh, at one stage, they look over, all in first person. They look over and they hack a thing. I don't really know. They they hack something or rather, and then a they door. keep running and they go. For, a do- oh, a yeah, door. You're probably right. Yeah, it's a door. <laughs> they hack a door. They manage to escape, uh, and then they crawl around some more. There's alarms and you know all sorts of things going on, and it's and then they get to the end, and the whole tile screen comes up, and then it goes to a different or same character. I wasn't really 100 percent sure to be honest, uh, but it then shows us them walking down. I was talking to someone else. Something about mission can't go in there. And then they reveal their face. That, and I thought it was about to reveal it to be a fucking tie-in to fucking Death Stranding. <laughs> 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 Is what I thought. Uh, but, I mean, look, look. It's a CGI thing, right? We've got no gameplay per se. We have an idea of what the gameplay would be, which is a stealth game where you <laughs> hack doors and whatever else. Judging off solely what we see, which obviously isn't much, I'm intrigued. I put I put my level at. I'm intrigued. How about you? Yeah, it looks all right. Not a game that I think I'd be into, but looks interesting. Um, I was getting like, I think they were like on a spaceship. Like you got the impression, maybe like a secret lab, yeah. dead space. Yeah, so dead space. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we'll have to see more gameplay, like proper gameplay. Yeah. Also, in case you're wondering, before we get too ahead of ourselves, not all of these are CGI stuff. In fact, most of these actually have gameplay in them. Just that one, maybe. I no. think that's the only one with that gameplay, actually. Uh, so the next one is called Ran Lost Islands, which is described as a cold we- a cold weapon survival game, which I'm like, is oh. that a smelling of game? It's supposed to be like Cold War? <laughs> because it's a cold weapon survival game i think so, there's been a problem in translation <laughs> yes because in the trailer you see people you see a combination of people fighting on ships uh, and land in what looks to be chinese i'm i mean i'm pulling out mass guessing but it does look like chinese villages of some sort during some sort of like uh war civil war or something like that potentially yeah, that's what, or, you know what uh, i mean it reminded like, me of like the civil war where yeah. That age of guns and stuff. Yeah. So Muskets and yeah. pistols. Which is something that's worth swords. pointing out that st- stood out to me is, so you have guns and swords, but it is every time they fire one shot, they take about three to four seconds to reload after every single shot they <laughs> fire. So at least it's semi-accurate a bit um, running around. They they then have some like sword-to-sword combat. It definitely doesn't look like, uh, what's that Ubisoft one? Fuck. For Honor. The name of it Right, yeah, it doesn't it definitely doesn't look like no no foreigner. Uh, so look, no, is my answer. Yeah, it's not very. Impressive. Looking at it, looking at what we I see, mean, it looks cool. This, it could reckon? be interesting if it was um, uh, multiplayer, I guess. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. I don't know. Looking at the trailer and judging solely off that, of course, without really any. Like VR or any, like, you know, de- develop a commentary to kind of explain what the fuck is going on and, and that sort of thing. Because it, it's just what we have in, in this one thing here. No, I'd say it's probably my least favorite out of the seven games mm. we've got happening here, I'd, I'd say, personally. Uh, okay, so the next one is called Ren Lost Islands. That's no, the one on. you just did. got it wrong. Sorry. Yeah, that's the one I just did. I was like, holy shit. I scrolled the wrong direction. It is called Con. The Convalaria? Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Convalaria, which is described as an online game focusing on player versus enemy and player versus player elements. Now, I will fix what that says and tell you this game is an MMO. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, that's sure. 100% what it looks like to me, especially once you get into the gameplay. So this one's a fairly lengthy trailer. Uh, 
it's it shows off a bunch of environments and enemies and different couple of different player characters and the the general world and introduces you to it for the first like minute minute and a half and it's also like a weird combination it's very anime for the first showing off the world and stuff like it's this combination between uh forest worlds uh, like you know trees and shit like that and it's yep. also combined that in with footage of some like neo neon fucking town you know bright lights and everything like that and then two characters like run one another and then they disappear into another one one another it's like some some hardcore anime shit happening here but once you get to if i skip when well, i fucking find the point in the video once you get to like two, two minutes two and a half minutes or something like that they start introducing all these monsters that look directly like they're out of fucking world of warcraft or some shit yeah like, here we are two minutes 24 is where you get the gameplay happening so they show a bunch of different characters uh what I would presume is character classes they're kind of going over because they show you a bunch of different, like, oh, this one's kind of, this one's like the sniper class, this one's like the stealthy class, this one's the or the assassin class and whatever else. Like this character's the, the one was just watching in the, the two-minute anime video who seems like the salt class, I guess. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're shooting at a bunch of enemies. Looks very much like an MMO type thing to me. There's like, I think you can see like six or more characters at one point running around together. Um, if I hold on, if I skip around here and I pause at the video at some point, I'm pretty sure you can see like, yeah, that looks like about one, two, three, four, all right, five characters. I can see in the screenshot here at 254. If you want to pull over in your car and find the video and, and watch along while we're listening to this. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's five characters running along here at one point of fighting and teaming up together. So and considering the description we got here, player versus player and player versus uh, enemy, like it's an MMO hybrid type thing is what it looks like to me. And it looks fine-ish, I guess. Yeah. It looks like it would be a really fun free-to-play game. That is probably a very good way to describe it, actually. <laughs> that is probably a, <laughs> the best way to describe it. In fact, if it was free-to-play, you could you'd probably have more of a higher chance of me checking it out. But as it stands, it's kind of like, is this like Monster Hunter Lite? Is that what this is? Is this what this game is? I don't Looks know. Looks like a oh, cheap, cheap Destiny. Well. Budget that, yeah. Destiny. I Googled Convala uh, Convalaria, mm. which I'm sure you did as well. Oh, absolutely. But what I found is, <laughs> what I found is the plant description from Wikipedia. Convalaria is the genus, gen, genus of flowering plants is usually described as a monotopic, monotypic genus with a single species Convalaria maljulis, but now some botanists distinguish up to three species, including Convalaria kiski and Convalaria in Montana. There you go. That tells you everything you need to know about the game. Actually, do you That's understand our what botanist I'm saying? segment of the week. <laughs> Okay, the next game here is called AI Limit. AI Limit is described simply as an action RPG. I thought this one looked pretty fucking cool, to be honest. This is probably one of my... The character design of the main character uh, looks really cool. So it's a uh, female character, I guess, and she has a fucking... Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, very anime looking, I guess. Is yeah, like a, what was that other it. game recently with the girl with white hair? Uh, well, it remind yeah, uh, that's exactly what it's reminding me of. Um, I haven't played it though. Why I forget, yeah. forget uh, B A B whatever the fuck that's called. Uh, holy fucking shit! Oh my <laughs> fucking god, we're both forgetting it. It was nominated yeah. for fucking Game of the Year awards and all sorts of shit, and we're forgetting it. Everyone listening is just pulled over into their cars if they haven't already and just screaming it. They're like I can't believe it's that game where you play as the, the, and there's the robots and you have to play it like 16 times to see all the endings and oh, Square Enix and oh my fucking God. It's, it's the sequel to the game from the Dragon Guard series and the, oh my fucking God. Anyway, if you know what game we're talking about, uh, the character kind of looks like <laughs> the character from that, which is called 2B, AB, BB, you know, all that, all that sort of character. You know, near, near, near Automata. Automata. Fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> it came to me literally right as I think he was finding it. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like the character from Near Autonoma is what we've been trying to spend the last <laughs> minute building towards. <laughs> uh, which is cool, you know. And all the all the enemies and stuff looks very cool. The world is basically, looks like some cyberpunky type thing and happening. And it's... It, 
you know, just kind of looks like a typical action game, I guess. You don't really get anything to stand out about the gameplay or what you're really doing. I just I just thought the art style and all that sort of stuff was rubbing me the right way. So I'm intrigued. What do you, what do you reckon? Yeah, one? it looks cool. It, yeah. I mean, it looks like your basic hack and slashy Bayonetta-ish yeah. sort of game. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, so next one is in Nightmare, which if you couldn't guess from title, is described as a horror adventure game. Dun, dun, dun. This one, I wasn't particularly sold on like i was very confused if it was supposed to be like a, a hardcore horror game or like a horror game for like a light hardcore like a light horror game for kids but you know like not kids kids but obviously like 12 up or something you know what i mean like a younger horror game because yeah. the art style's very like a goosebumps level is scary yeah this is what yeah like because nothing i could see in the trailer unless i'm missing something here stood out as being particularly terrifying. adult orientated terrifying other than like just the constant dread of obviously trying to run, run away from some creepy type thing trying to get you or whatever but i mean the art style and everything we see in this kind of just looks like a yeah a goosebumps type story to me well, what do you reckon for this one yeah it looks very cartoonish i guess sort of the art style yeah so i don't know could be Is interesting a typical horror thing too where it's just it's really you don't really get much from the trailer it, it's a character it's not first person it's just a like third uh not third it's person like uh, isometric almost. isometric yeah also yeah basically yeah it is and you, you, you're moving around you're running around looks like there might be some puzzles and stuff but yeah that style look, does look like a kid's cartoon or something so meh like i'll, I'll put it as a, a meh like mm. it, it could intrigue me later we'll see uh the next game is I don't know. I'll top three, right? Let, let, let's say AI limit is top three. F this next one, which is called Fist, is top three, and then the one one after that, I also put in the top three. These these three are my the next ones we're talking about are all my favorites. Yeah. But Fist, I was on board the second I basically started this trailer because I was like, what is going on here? Because oh, hold on, we got we got a misdescription here from fucking whatever forum board. Uh, a Diesel Punk Metroidvania game. You read that, you're like, okay, cool. Metroidvania, Diesel Punk, yeah, sure, that sounds interesting. And then you start the trailer, and you're like, okay, the world looks, uh, the world looks like fucking Final Fantasy VII. It basically looks like fucking Spira, is what's going on here. So that's intriguing. And then you get into about, if you want to skip to the good part, everyone playing along at home. Let's let's find the part here. You get to about, I think it's a minute in. Here we go, a minute in, and this giant, this rabbit shows up. And this is a mean, badass looking motherfucking rabbit. It's like <laughs> it's like Samuel Jackson's voice in this fucking rabbit. This rabbit has giant metal fists attached to its back. <laughs> and it jumps off and lands in this uh, this train track thing. And then we're into proper gameplay. And it looks like it's a side scrolling I mean, as it's Beat described, yeah, Met yeah, Metroidvania. So you you're beating up characters and stuff, and there's obviously going to be some level of backtracking and what else going on, but it looks good. It looks like the combat and everything plays well and there's different variation of like uh, melee attacking enemies, attacking you, ones with different types of guns and all sorts of stuff. You can do big combos, you, you're hitting enemies up into the air and attacking them, uh, doing sweeping combos, all sorts of things with these giant fucking fists attacked to the back of you. Uh, I'm down. I thought this looked really, really cool. They show some platforming yeah. stuff towards the end of the, the trailer as well. So yeah, what do you think of this? Yeah, really cool art design. <laughs> and uh, how could you not want to play a game with a giant rabbit with a fist on it? Yeah, exactly. As, as soon as I saw it's the character a, model, it's a pretty easy sold. sell. <laughs> <laughs> it, I think it really is. Also, at the end, I'd never realized until I was just watching it here as I was talking. At the end, it says fist working title. No, motherfuckers, fist is your title. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. Do not change. Do not change the title of this game. It works perfectly. Fist. The game. <laughs> it also stands for something. It's an acronym. It's F dot I dot fucking fighting. Mother I just just call it the rabbit badass motherfucking rabbit game. There you go. That's what it, that's what's yeah. called. I've solved all your solved all your problems for you basically. All right. So the last game, which I also quite enjoyed, is called Anno Multinate. Oh my god. Mol. How do you, how do you say that word? Mutinonium. Is it? Mutinonium. 
Does it have a meaning? Like if I this isn't what I said. I, no I need to know. Hold on. Let me Google this. We, I think you're just making up words. I think it is a made up word because the only result that came up in Google is this press start article. So there we go. Uh, it says a cyberpunk action RPG for the made up word game. But fuck the name of it. They'll change that hopefully. Not like Fist, which has the best name ever. Uh, but the gameplay and the game is described as a cyberpunk action RPG. And the trailer starts. I wasn't on board to start off with. I was like, oh, I don't know about this art style. You know, I wasn't, well, I wasn't completely sold. It's definitely a, a unique art style it's anime-ish again i suppose is somewhere to, to describe it very yeah. very cyberpunky though it's got all the cyber, cyberpunk tropes and, and stuff happening and especially with the color design and all these sorts of things happening but once we got about halfway in or ish you see a giant fucking dinosaur <laughs> starts leaving your buildings i was like okay what's going on? we got a cyberpunk going with some like dinosaur type thing happening i'm intrigued and then we get a little bit further into the trailer if i skip ahead myself here i think it's towards the end they start gameplay okay so about a minute five is a minute ten is you, you get a, some gameplay here and it looks like uh fast paced as the title says action rpg it looks like fast paced action game where you have a laser sword and you're shown beating up a bunch of various characters including said dinosaur that like, we saw a little bit earlier in the trailer and it l- looks like just picturing playing that i was like yes for the, the brief brief glimpse of gameplay i got here I'm intrigued. You've got a fucking laser sword. You're jumping all around the place. This character, I like this. I like this character. She looks like a badass character. I'm down. And then it ends at the end with a really cool uh, wallpaper, basically screen, which is very cyberpunk. It has obviously the the giant lights of like a neon Tokyo or something happening in the background. Or yeah, it's not it's not neo Tokyo though. If it, I mean, if it's a Chinese game, I presume that they're, they're like making a neon neo Hong Kong or neo Shanghai, neon Hong Kong or something like that. Sure, yeah. Um, basically happening in the background, and then they've got your typical, was what I would call your typical cyberpunk car because there's a certain shape and design to it. And everything. Basically, it's Knight Rider vehicle is what most <laughs> cyberpunk <laughs> fucking cars look like. Uh, and, yeah, and the character's like leaning up against that and it's a very cool shot and everything. So yeah, I thought this one was very, very good as well. What do you think of this one? Yeah, it looks really cool. The art design's really cool. It's like a sort of like high-end pixel, pixel art sort of, I guess, mm-hmm. is what I would describe it as. But at least some of it looks pixel art-ish. Yeah, I'd, uh, yeah that's, I'd agree, yeah. And the soundtrack sounds pretty cool, so... I mean, now, yeah. if you had to go back through them all, what well, looking at the list here, Jack and you could quickly rank them in your, what would be like I your least interested to your most pretty, interested. Yeah, uh, Fist, Anno Mutinonium, <laughs> yeah. AI Limit. Um, I know, Convalaria, um, In Nightmare. Ran Lost Islands and then Evo, whatever the first one was. Yeah, yeah so I, I'm kind of similar, I guess. I'd, I'd go, I'd go Fist first because obviously Fist is the game of the the show. Uh, then I'd probably have AI Limit, then and 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 I, I probably just because I got a better idea of the gameplay in the AI stuff compared to what we saw in Anno. I think is why I took yeah. them two and three. Uh, then I'd probably chuck in, I'd chuck in it for the. Uh, evo- evo- evocation or whatever the hell it is even though we saw no gameplay but the general premise of that could be something I'm interested in uh, then chuck in In Nightmare because if it truly is like a, a kiddish horror game goosebumpy type thing I'm intrigued I'm down I'm in for it then I'll chuck in the Con Valaria or whatever the fuck it's called which is hopefully a free to play game <laughs> and then I'll put Ran last simply because they show a lot of gameplay but it really didn't look too hot hot to me particularly uh, so that's it. Seven brand new games that are going to be coming out, published by Sony. In the they don't, I mean, they don't have the date yet, as far as I'm, I've seen anywhere. But um, a lot of these look fairly, uh, fairly long way into development, from what we can tell. If if you was to guess based on solely off these seven trailers, you'd say that the one who's the game that's the furthest away would be a Vochen or whatever the fuck it's called, because that's the only one yeah. that doesn't have a hint of gameplay shown in it. So. But then it's like fist and all that. Just give me fist is the answer to this the, the sh- title of this episode. <laughs> give me fist. <laughs> give it to me now. Looks fucking great. Mouse. G- um, sorry, but giant fucking rabbit with fists. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Free bags more. All right. Ramming up show. Let's move on the hashtag every trophy counts. Just got 
three lists to go over here for you. Of course, the first one, Division 2 trophies have popped. Uh, of course, by the time you listen to this, the game is out, technically, maybe, depending on what you're, how and you're buying it. But the trophy list looks easier than the first one, I think. And this is as someone who got the Platinum for the first one. But the trophy list have kind of swung on its head as well. So they've got rid of a bunch of single player stuff. It looks to me, uh, of course you can beat all the campaign ish, the story missions or whatever. Like there's trophies here for, you know, do this, do this. I'm sure some of these are spoilers. I only read like the first two mission titles and then the rest I, I kind of skipped, but they all seem like story based stuff that you could do with people or not. But then like the first game had, trophies or at least one or two from memory for collecting collectibles this trophy list makes no mention of any sort of collectibles at all uh, that i could see apart from blueprints but that's to do with guns it's not like really the same because the first game had the audio log type things that you, you'd pick out throughout, throughout the world so that that's a little bit different it doesn't have that but then it's got more trophies that are basically requiring you to have to play with others like doing stuff in a faction and then potentially what might be the hardest trophy i don't really know there's a lot here up for question it's like dark zone blackjack hijack hijack and extraction in any dark zone during a blackout so it's like how hard is that going to be to do especially if you're by yourself i'm not 100 percent sure i suppose you could just continually run around trying to hijack a fucking blackout but then um well, hijack a dark side but then like when's a blackout occur i'm not 100 sure on how that all, all works in or what how that happens and then there's another one here it's like just a bronze but it says collect 20 blueprints it's like a blueprint's actually going to be hard to find in the game i'm not sure uh photo mode take a group uh take a photo of a group of four agents uh so if you're playing by yourself that might be hard i guess unless you, you start messaging random people running par you could use all stops so i can get a selfie with you uh, then, of course, there's, there's not many. I think there's only like two gold. Oh, there's four golds in mine. So there's four, but there's still not that many golds. It's like reach level 30, a bunch of other things. But uh, difficulty will, of course, be determined once it's out and have a little bit better idea of what's going on here. Um, Ghost of the Tale is out this week for PS4, which is, is exciting because Ghost of the Tale is a. Uh, from what I played, I never actually finished on PC, basically because I wasn't a huge fan of the control scheme for it. Uh, even plugging in plugging in a uh, Xbox controller to play it, I didn't feel like it was a very good job at um, making it play. Like I can't remember the fucking word for like making it play well using a controller on PC is is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so I can't stop playing it for that. But from what I played, which was a couple hours on stream at some point last year, I was enjoying it. So that's great. It's out this week on PS4. Exciting. It has a plat. Also exciting, of course. That's a platinum. Great news. The platinum, though, can go completely fuck itself because looking through the trophies here, it starts out fine. It's like escape from the cell, blah, blah, blah. Like, very start of the game. I'm like, yeah, okay. So these are story based ones. Uh, complete full sets of armor. I'm like, I'm pretty sure those ones might be missable because from what I gathered, I'm not 100% sure if you could go all the way back to certain areas. I'm not 100% sure. Either way, it's like, okay. So they're kind of like collectible stuff. But then we get to this set of trophies here. And this is where the game can go completely fuck itself. Complete the game without getting hit by an enemy. Fuck, fuck off. that. Yep. <laughs> Complete the game. Unless there is ever... no enemies in your game, fuck that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Complete the game without ever eating to regain energy. No. Complete the game without alerting any guards. How about fuck no? So yeah, I mean, look. <laughs> unless it's like course... super. Unless it's like a super easy version. Level yeah. setting. Yeah, it's, unless there's a, yeah, a difficulty that gets rid of all the fucking enemies. But it's like, if you're a hardcore uh, stealthy type person or whatever, this might be a really interesting uh, platinum for you to go to, uh, to try and get. For me personally, no, that game, this game can suck a fuck, you know. Don't alert any enemies. Don't take any damage. What, you know, No. Get out of here. I'm pretty sure I died like fucking 20 times in a row at one point <laughs> trying to, when I was playing it originally. So no, no, thank you very much. But Ghost of a Tale, if you're not aware, it's a it's a game where you play as a mouse. Uh, you're trapped by rat, rats. You start the game in the prison. You escape the prison. And then you're pretty much discovering the story as you go from there. So it's, it's all told as you go. But it's like, hey, you're trapped. You escape. The rats are the bad guys. Go for it. It's, it's really interesting. Uh, spin on stealth game character models were cool and stuff like that and it's more old school stealthy of course like you, you're not picking out you're not randomly finding a fucking gun to, p to pick up with one bullet they can use as a, a quick means it's it's all old school kind of stealthy stuff uh the last game i wanted to call out here i have no idea what it is but it's one to keep our eye on everyone one to keep our eye on 
It's called Ghoul Boy. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because it has one platinum, 11 gold. That is its full trophy list. The trophies, as far as I can tell, solely based on the name of them and the image of the game, which looks to me like a side-scrolling, because they always are these games, a side-scrolling adventure game of some sort. But it's just like, kill the first boss, kill the second boss, complete 10 levels, pass the Samora level, finish all the levels, die 30 times, obtain 5,000 coins, buy all upgrades, throwable, this is a rule, I'm not fucking around with my English here, throwable 100 objects, that is a trophy, complete 20 levels, big sword. That's the last trophy. It's called big sword, and the description reads, big sword. <laughs> <laughs> so uh that's one we should all keep our eye on because there's nothing better than a game that ends the trophy list with big sort i like leaving the, the nice gap there so everyone's like it's, it's a podcast okay but then we just come back in with the the hotness big sort, big sort. <laughs> all right thank you for joining us all on this week's episode of platinum explosion you can of course follow the show on twitter at plat podcasts you can follow me on twitter at vivo deal v-i-v-a-l-a-d-i-o we can follow you ash follow me on twitter at ashley hobley a-s-h-l-e-y-h-o-b-l-e-y sure can it's a thing uh don't forget to rate this show on apple podcasts if you can if you can't word of mouth retweeting it of course these types of things even liking it just liking the tweet liking the facebook post do what you need to do liking the instagram post do all these things uh join our discord we can talk about games and all sorts of things and be like, hey, how you going? And I'll be like, all right. Mm. And then you can go really silent for a couple of seconds. Big sword, though. Like, good job, everyone. So explosionnetwork.com slash discord is where you can do that. This is, of course, a product of the Explosion Network, of which you can find many more shows, articles, news, reviews, and great things at explosionnetwork.com. Until next week, follow the Explosion Network at ExplosionPod. Bye-bye. I don't think we did a clap at the start of the episode. That proves how fucking tired I am. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than backwards sinking. <laughs> yep. <laughs>